Hello everyone, it's me, Mr. Sneaky, and today we're going to be covering everything in Season 1 Plus Reset. We've gone over the full first impressions during the live stream, so if you haven't checked it out, go back and check out the full 6 hour in first impressions live stream. We go through everything in a full reset, but with all that said, let's go into Season 1 Plus Patch 1.016's first ever Division Reset. Hello, so yes, we're going to go over Season 1 Plus Reset. This is going to be the summary video of the live stream. Everything we've learned so far in a nice little jam-packed episode for you guys to watch. So if you want to, though, go back, click on the live links on the you know my channel profile. You'll be able to watch the full six hours. You can skip through it wherever you want to, and you can watch wherever you want to your heart's content. So with all that said, smash like, comment, and subscribe. And with all the intros plugged in, let's go into the patch. So we're gonna break it up as much as we can so we can timestamp it like always for you guys. So the first thing we're gonna go over is actually heroes. We do have one of them. We have Frega, and as a first impressions here right now, she is definitely going to be one of the best marksmen in the game. She is absolutely absurd when we look over quickly her skills for you guys for the first time. If this is your first viewing of her, we'll give you a little bit. You can just pause the video. It's up to you. Go back and check it out. She's very, very strong. We're going to do a full video on her later on so don't you worry and then we also gained Sindrion. so Sindrion is the rally hero again very interesting concept for a marksman which we're going to go over again in his own first impressions on his kit a really cool thing they've done as well with the tool tips as you can see the stronghold here is highlighted so if you click this it does tell you this includes passes alliance fortresses alliance towers and Alliance Keep, so might be a little hint in the future of where things are going to go. Maybe we'll go back to that rallying sort of style combat in a new season. That might be 3 or season 4, you know, similar to Rise of Kingdoms, where you can jump into towers as a whole alliance, and you have to defend that structure, right? And then we have a nice, cool buff on skill 3. Again, really, really cool buff. Very, very powerful as well for a rally. Then his fourth skill for you guys. And then the final skill is going to be a increase a passive. So that is the quick little rundown on him. I'm not going to give you guys obviously too much right now. Because we're going to do a full video on him, right? So I don't want you to get spoiled. But they are very, very good commanders in their own rights. And obviously we're going to discuss that. With that, there is obviously the new artifacts. So we're going to discuss them as well. The two new artifacts, we're going to go over the Archer first. Archer one is really interesting and it's pretty good as well. I'm not going to lie. This might be an A tier artifact. We're going to have to obviously unlock it and test it out and maybe get other players' opinions. But the way this works is very similar to Gwanwin's skill one. It does a three consecutive hit. But as you can see, you could hit different enemies. So this guy got hit first, then this guy, and then that guy. So you can change the direction on who you're hitting each time, which is very, very crazy and cool that you can do. But when you do it, it is a massive, when, when you do max it out, it's, I think it's a 2,500 damage factor. And if that target you're hitting is already defense break as a passive, you will gain a 10% defense penetration against them. Really, really powerful single target effect again for archers. So we're going to see how well this exceeds. But the one that is taking the light so far is the cavalry one spring blades is so goddamn good guys i'm not even gonna deny it this is so fun already to look at and use it does in a absurd amount of damage so it's a 600 rage cause you fling out it does 3k instantly to the target as you can see it does up to i think five ticks five ticks of 750 damage AOE on three targets there. And then when you it, it returns to you. So if you could run away far enough. 
this could get pulled through a multiple of enemies but when it does get pulled poo it deals damage up to three enemies again so that's another 3k 3k and potentially another 3k on the exit so that is crazy amounts of damage and to top it all off you get a 15 percent attack buff so this is going to be probably an s plus plus tier cavalry artifact in the future for the amount of aoe damage this is going to do in pvp combat it's going to be absolutely terrifying to see on the open field so that's going to be the first section it's nice little coverage on the heroes and artifacts and now what we're going to do is go over some of the events and then we'll move on to some of the mechanics that did get implemented in the patch so the events is very very cool when you get into a season reset you're going to get introduced to the wheel of destiny we have a full video coming out if not if it's already out on it so watch that if it is so it, this is a cool event you, obviously it costs us gems to get your tickets but this is the first way you can get access to Sindrion as well as Frega and Bakshi on the wheel as well as Garwood as some legendary unlocks for you as well you get the quiz quest quiz quest is honestly a fantastic addition you get 10 questions if you watch Mr. Hulk than Gaming's video, yes, Mr. Hulk, he did do a fantastic guide on this, showcasing all the answers for you guys, if you don't know the answers yourselves, but we did do it live on stream from the knowledge and law that we know within our brains in the Mr. Sneaky Army, so... When you do go through it, we got one wrong, and that was because I did a little misclick, which was quite funny on stream. But the cool thing is, if you get one wrong, you can do different things, like use a boost item. And by using a boost item, you can claim a retry and just do the one question you got wrong. And by doing that, we obviously got it right. And when you get it all right, you get the legendary hero token and obviously the nice little goodies for the summer smash event which is what we're going to talk about next the summer smash really really easy event to understand just kill your darklings and dark creatures at the start of the season and then you're going to get some flower crowns and acorns and with these two little currency items you will go to your blessings of oak and your blessings of oak is your shop or store for the event obviously that we got straight away the avatar frame as well as the dance flyer flowers and the book of retraining this is allows you to reskill your heroes in case maybe they got landed on the wrong skills and you want to fix them or try and be a mid maxer like myself and get your Nico to maybe a 5155 commander instead and not having to worry about investing into him anymore. So, we do have other rewards like your chest, as well as obviously keys and epic hero tokens, but you can get legendary hero tokens, and this is what we should be always trying to focus on. After you've got at least the two frames, it's up to you if you want to get these or not. I would recommend it though. But you can get these legendary hero tokens as well as at the top some more resources and speed ups for leftovers after. But your main focus should be this token guys. It's going to be very very crucial to obviously invest into and level up those heroes. We have a bunch of extra events. We have Riches of Forest which to be honest does showcase the artifacts like we were talking about earlier you can see their max stats here with the damage which is compared to before as well as the spring blades will do the same so you can see the damage right here and we go to max you can see the big increase massive changes on it right so even the attack percentage is increased so very very powerful very very good but Riches of Rick Forest, I would not recommend if you're a free to play or low spender because it costs 6,000 gems to spin. But this is not a weird new wheel. This event, in my eyes, is a con. Uh, why? You've got the Universal Artifacts Compendium, and it is the exact same version as the Riches of Forest. The only difference is in the probability table. So it's your very, very first chance to try and get lucky and unlock something like the Rattle Spear or the Infernal Flame or the Spring Blades or your Dragon Scale 
armor as the event goes but as you'll see it's only a 1.5 percent chance like the other event 11.4 on the chances and you can still get blues and greens which i do not like when you're spending on a special event that's meant to turn up once in a while so hopefully they maybe address this and maybe get rid of the greens and the blues so you do get to spend 6k gems and get only epics and maybe a legendary right so that's what i would hope obviously it would be a little bit greedy but that is one of the events the coolest event in all of this, in my eyes, is the Dragon Trail Race. A really cool thing, it incentivizes you to complete your Dragon Trail. The first person to get to stage 55 is going to get some crazy rewards, as you can see on screen. You can still get rewards for rank 2, 3, and then all the way from 4 to 10, and then it goes all the way down to all to 150. We got 50 to 100 rewards, 20 to 50 rewards, and you can see 11 to 20. Nice and easy to read and understand. But it's a cool rank system. You can see who hit rank 55 first in what time. So you can see who prioritized what on their account. So it's a really cool act. As well with an act, you've got time to act, which is when you spend your speed ups. This could be on building, resource, uh, building or research or even training. And at the current stage, we are rank free on the event. So really nice event for us to try and push some power and try and get some free, obviously, universal heads for our season two commanders. Healing and Call, as well as Great Revival and Behemoth Hunter, you should know. These are at the start of every season. The higher your membership is, the more rewards you're going to get. Behemoth Hunter is the tracking for all the behemoths. And then you have the Great Revival, which is, again, what you have at the start of each season. This is just a bit of alliance help to get you going. And then at the very, very bottom, and this is what I've left all the way to the end, is the strongest lord the strongest lord is Sindrion when it comes to the heroes so this is the way you're going to obtain him if you're going to try and get him when it's not on the wheel of destiny and if you're going to try obtain your Frigga, the way you're going to obtain her in the future through the next event will be through the wheel of fortune so if we go to the skills and we try and get more skills you can get Universal Hero Tokens or the Lucky Spin. So you can see she's going to be a Lucky Wheel Commander in Season 2. So prepare your gems and get ready to unlock her. With all that said, let's go into some cool mechanics in this patch, which I want to go over and give you guys a little bit extra tips, as well as some info when it comes to your very first reset. So the first mechanic we're going to go over is villagers. So the village changes are in the game. So you can do is click on one of the villagers, as you can see, and you hit the raid button. You can see all the members that can participate. Each village also has a little member cap. So you want to make sure you do get these. They have all sorts of different buffs. You can click at the very top where it says zero out of five with the little house icon. And that is your village buffs. You can going to be able to click on that. There's different varieties down to peacekeeping damage as well as your elixir storage, your elixir production rate. There's a five different buffs in total, but they're the main ones you're going to be looking at when it comes into it. So that is the first major change when it comes to the new patch. So let's go over some other changes as well that you guys are going to need to be aware of when you want in to come into Season 1 Plus and understand at least a nice base of what's going on. So, as you guys know, we have the new healing feature in the game. So, that is Elixir Healing. It's been improved already, as you guys know, with the patch. So, you're going to be able to get some free healing when you need it. And then, obviously, this increases. I think every six hours, you can get your 65k. Really nice production on that, on the upgrade. We also have a really cool addition when it comes to VIP. The reason why I'm talking about it is in your daily gifts, if you notice right now, you can put your season two hero in your daily. So yes, that's a nice little tip for you if you've got the hurt unlocked and you want to try and get her as quickly as you can upgraded. That is the way to go. Also, you get the new mechanic, which is villagers. We've got a separate video on that, which is going to quickly transition into it. But the village system is new. So at the top of the screen, you can see a zero out of five. And when you click on that zero out of five, if it will let me, 
It's a little bit finicky at times. It doesn't want to now. Love it. Love it for the video. But on that zero out of five, you do normally get to click it and see all of your your villagers. So you get to see what you control and what buffs you control with that. And with that function, it's basically if we zoom right out now, we're going to be able to see some markers. So this is one of the villagers right now. You can click raid on it and it will summon a patrol that you have to kill. And once you've killed it, you will gain this village effect. You can have, again have up to five different village effects. All the villagers have one of five different buffs. I wish I could show you, but again, it won't let us click on it. So unfortunately, the game a little bit buggy still. It's a new season. It is what it is. But again, that is one of the new systems in the game. Another one is to do with heroes. We have now five and six star heroes. We already got a bunch of our epic heroes, as you can see, into the five star range. So we do have that nice 3% attack resistance on them. And then with the legendaries, we were working on getting our Nico five starred first. And then afterwards, we most likely are going to try and do the same for our Frega over time. So the level effects are also in the game. So right now you can, it does ex explain your hero level right here. So once you get to level 50, you can only get XP through PVP battles. So that's a very interesting thing in the game. Another very interesting change is in the August stone. So I know these are a little bit rapid fire right now, but there's a lot to cover. In here, you'll notice the August stones have changed. So when we go to the outbreak of war, now you must have 10,000 merits by the end of this cooldown to get this event. Also, I think it is in either Silent Desperation, Glorious Names, or is it Chest of Desire? It's one of these. There we go. Swords into Plowshares. Now you gotta get 25,000 merits by the end of this stage, and this is before the Diabet unlocks. And then you also have the Art of War, which is before the Dragon, and that's 35,000 merits. And that is also a new change. So if you look, the Dragon unlocks right here, which is called Garlands of Paradise. And then at the end of the season is when your Magma Demon unlocks. So for some reason, I've swapped these around and changed them. But you must occupy three magma lemon um, layers by the end of the season. So that's a very crazy one to try and get right at the end. But it is what it is. So that is the new augstone changes they've done as well. Which is really cool to see. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We're going to go quickly into a nice transition. And showcase off the village mechanics before we move on. And then afterwards we're going to round up things with the idrasil crystals and then we'll be done so i hope you enjoyed the video smash like comment and subscribe like always and support the best call of dragons content creator you guys falling in love with so i hope you've enjoyed those village changes and the village raiding in the game and we're going to go over now the final part of the season but a lot of you are probably wondering what to do and that is your crystals so obviously you get your crystals earned when you are placed either anointed which is rank one or you get conqueror which is rank two and if you're not anywhere else you're always rank three when you get your rank one we got access to 2468 um crystals so what we use them on and you can see now and you can add it all up so it's just 600 so one of them was spent here across here we bought both of these. This was 750 and I think this was 600. And then this one here is 100 now. So all that combined is what we went for. Obviously, you can choose to go for whatever you like. And we also got the Legendary Ascension Emblem that you should always get. So the ones you should always get is the Emblem. Obviously, we've always said it many times. And then the Legendary Hero Tokens. And then afterwards, it's up to you. I get the CP because I think with the CP, it means you can obviously level your heroes up higher quicker. And then you can obviously use them in your dragon trials. And then use your dragon trials to get your prestige back to basically it all works like in, like a little clockwork, you know, motion. So really, really powerful thing to do. And as you can see at the same time, you get your anointed artifact compendium. So for me, 
you can see this is our probability table. We're going to spin it a few times on stream to end things. And then you can get your epics as well. 87% of the time. So we're going to see how well we do. So if you've enjoyed today's video, smash like, comment and subscribe. And let's see how lucky we actually are. So we're going to draw one. And we've got an epic. Okay, that's not bad. Not the one we want. That's fine. We've got another epic. That's fine. We're going to only go to around 7,000-ish gems. Because um, we're going to need gems for the Fragar wheel. So we are going to spend some on that. We're just going to showcase how, how lucky we really, truly are. We're going to do two more. One more spin. We're going to do one more and bring us maybe, maybe there. There we go. That's enough for us today. So you can see we've had five... We could try keep going. No, we're going to keep going. We're lying to you. I'm only teasing. We're going to do all 10. We're going to do a 10 roll and see how far we actually get or what we get in those attempts. We've got three more to go. Freezing ring. One more to go. Freezing ring. Last one. <sighs> we either want Shadow Blades or the Visage of Sanctus. Okay, we got Dragon Rift. Not bad, not bad. But you can see where we mean, guys. You get your um, artifacts there. So if you want to spend a mass amount of gems, there you are. Only advise it to those guys that can afford to, to be honest. Obviously, we do it for the content. And you guys hope you enjoyed it. But with that, we're going to be able to obviously upgrade our Dragon's Rift. So we'll do that right now on camera. It's a level 2 artifact legendary. So that's nice to have. But that is the video, guys. Obviously, you can see um, we are Wilderberg. We are reason we're Wilderberg is because we're trying to run archers now. So we're going to run as many as we can. Oh, the nice look change as well. Quality of life. Visual look on the orcs have changed as well. It looks beautiful. And then we zoom out. We're going to just showcase where we are. But this is Super Server 8 now. It's clashed. Oh, Super Server. Super, Super, Super Server 1. Um, dash one, division eight. We've got divisions, servers two, three, five, seven, and eight in this officially now. So even though it said we were going to go against nine, it was wrong for some reason. But it is what it is. We're going to be obviously live streaming this and playing this all the time now. So I hope you enjoy the content that's going to be coming up. But for today's video, smash like, comment, and subscribe. So support your favorite Call of Duty content creator, which is obviously me guys i give you all the information as clear as day we try to give you as honest as we can but with all that said let's move on to the next video so stay safe stay sneaky peace out